Hey Math 43, let's take a look at a, another applet. This time we want to look at an applet that's going to help us better understand sampling distributions for proportions. So we had looked at sampling distributions for averages before. When we are looking at averages, that means we have a numerical variable and we look at averages. When we have categorical variables, we look at proportions, right? We keep a frequency count, the number of successes in our sample, and we turn it into a relative frequency when we divide by sample size. So let's take a look at sampling distributions of P prime, of sample proportions, and I'm gonna play this out with an applet that's about Reese's Pieces. I don't know how familiar you are with the candy Reese's Pieces, definitely a part of my childhood, I ate quite a few of those growing up. Reese's Pieces, uh, they come in three different colors. You can get red, orange, or yellow, and for the sake of this applet, we're gonna keep track of the number of oranges. So I wanna know how many orange candies am I gonna get? So I'm gonna fit this into one of two categories where either I get an orange or I don't get an orange. All right, so I get an orange or the red or yellow pop out. So I don't know if we've been to the mall before where, or if your mall has a particular section where there's just a bunch of candy machines, mine did growing up. So we're gonna pretend we've gone over to the Sun Valley Mall. We found the candy section. We have our quarter, right? Our parents gave us our an allowance or our allowance of a quarter. And we're gonna put that quarter in the candy machine and get some candy back out. So we've gone to the mall. We're at the candy section of the mall and we've got our quarter and we wanna buy some Reese's Pieces out of these candy machines. So let's set up some ground rules or some parameters here. We're gonna pretend, even though we don't really know this, but we're gonna pretend that inside the entire container, there are 40% orange candies. All right, now we wouldn't know that going in, but for the sake of this applet, we know that in the giant container, if I ran the census, 40% of those candies are oranges. All right, now I'm not gonna run the census, I wish, especially as a kid, I wish I could run the census, but I only have a quarter, and that quarter is gonna buy me 25 candies, okay? And I want you to just take a step back. If in this entire population, 40% of my rhesus are oranges, I would expect in my little sample, what I buy with my quarter, that 40% of my sample would also be orange candies. So let's just try and wrap our head around that. If you were gonna have 25 candies come out of that, that little machine and 40% should be orange, I would expect to see about 10 of my candies in my hand be orange, All right? And I also want us to take another step back and think, if I had two quarters or three quarters or seven quarters, right? if I put quarter in after quarter after quarter and I got a handful and then another handful and then another handful, I wouldn't get exactly 10 candies each time. Right? Sometimes I might get eight, sometimes I might get 11, I might get 12, right? And theoretically, you could get zero orange candies, one orange candy, two, all the way up to 25 orange candies. It's super unlikely you would get 25 of your candies all being orange. It's also super unlikely that zero of your candies would be orange. I, I think it'll be somewhere close to 10. So we're gonna simulate this on this applet, okay? So you can see here, I'm gonna put, I set my probability of orange to 40%. I'm gonna take 25 candies. I'm gonna do this once initially. All right, and instead of showing the number of orange, I'm gonna change this to proportion of orange. I'm gonna change our frequency to relative frequency. You can see they set up the x-axis with numbers between zero and one. Along that x-axis, I've got my label. This would technically be a P prime along that, that x-axis. And we're gonna keep track of the socks as we change the sample size going through here. All right, so let me draw this one sample and it's gonna animate. Let's see what we got here. So here comes my 25 candies. And when it looks, when I look at it, how many orange did I get? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I didn't exactly get the 10 I expected. I got nine, pretty close. That's why you see this little data value, this dot show up on my X axis, or technically my P prime axis at 36%. Now right, let's draw another one, okay? And you see they're spitting out 25 candies. And again, I got another nine orange candies. That's why you see in this dot plot they're starting to create. The frequency is now up at two. Okay, let me draw another one. See what we get. Oh, this time I didn't get nine, I got eight. And you see this other dot showing up here. So we're beginning to make this sampling distribution. 
Now I'm going to change this. I'm going to bump this up to, we've, we've done three already. Let me make it 997 just so we have a thousand samples. All right, and see what we got going on here. Oh, if I didn't hit animate, it would have gone a little bit faster. Okay, so let's take a look at some summary statistics, okay? So in terms of the shape, I'm seeing something pretty close to a bell curve. So I'm actually gonna say you, this is approximately normal. I, I could check it. I could use the central limit theorem and check that n times p was greater than or equal to 10, and n times one minus p was greater than or equal to 10, and we would just hit the normality clause there. And if you're not sure what I'm saying here, let me just show you. We did n times p, that was just 10. If I did 25 times one minus 0.4, Right. That number was also greater than or equal to 10, so I'm good to go in terms of normality. I would have kicked out that central limit theorem. All right, it says our mean here was point, what was it? 404, so 0.404 here, and our standard deviation was 0 0.096. Okay, so we've got that, that information happening here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. And now let's go to n equaling 50, okay? So let me go ahead and reset this. And let's see what's about to happen. And I want you to, I want you to try and guess. When we go to 50, what's going to change? Is the shape going to change? Is the center going to change? Is the standard deviation going to change? So let me go ahead and draw one of these. I'll animate it. But now I've bumped up my sample size to 50. All right, so it'll take a little bit longer to animate. All right, and I got 34% from my sample proportion, right? So my population proportion was 40%. I got 34% here, and if I count, it looks like I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So just looking at it right now, it looks like 17 out of my 50 candies, which was 34%, were a success. And if we just want to see what did I expect. I got 17 candies this time. If we had 50 candies and it's true that 40% of the population is orange, I expect 20 in my sample. I got 17 this time, but that's, that's well within the realm of possibilities. Let's try another one. Let's see if I draw this one more time and then I'm gonna click off of the animate because it takes a little long. All right, so what did we get this time? Ooh, we got a lot. This time we've got a sample proportion of 42. It actually looks like I got 21 orange candies because each of these little rows have six candies in them. So six times three is 18, 19, 20, 21. So even though I was expecting 20, right? On the first go, I got 17. On the second one, I got 21. That's just sampling variability. All right, and you can see my two dots popping out right here on the dot plot. Now let me unanimate this and we've done two samples already let me just kick it up to 998 and say draw samples and let's see what we have here that's looking pretty bellish to me so I'm gonna say that this is approximately normal all right and it looks like the mean was 0 0.400 and the standard deviation was 0. Point, let me be clear 069 okay all right so we've got a couple of things happening right so we see our population proportion was 40%. Our sampling distributions are close to four, or centered at 40%. And you can see that the standard deviation, so far it got smaller. Well, let's bump this up to 100 and see what happens. So I'm gonna take this to 100. I'm gonna just ignore the animate and let me put a thousand of these in here. And let's draw these. Whew. Okay, so taking a look at this, right? We've got something that is still approximately normal. All right, my center was 0 0.401, and my standard deviation was 0 0.051. Okay, so let's try and put all of this together, all right? So in terms of shape, checking shape in proportion land is tougher than mean land. Mean land, it's nice. It's either the population distribution is stated as normal, or the sample size is 30 or higher. But that is mean land. That has nothing to do with proportion land. Proportion land, you have to always check that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. So what that means in the context of this question is that we have to have 10 successes, 
and at least 10 failures in our sample. So in my sample, I would expect to see at least 10 orange candies and at least 10 candies that are not orange. So let's check this. I already checked it for 25, but I'm gonna check it again. Okay, so let me clear this out. If I was gonna check it for n being 25, I would do is 25 times 0.4 greater than or equal to 10. It is, so fantastic. Then I would need to check that 25 times 1 minus 0.4 was also greater than or equal to 10. It is, fantastic. Same thing's gonna happen for 50. All right, let's look at 50 times 0.4. Is that greater than or equal to 10? It is. What about 50 times 1 minus 0.4? Is that greater than or equal to 10? That is, right? Because I expect 20 orange candies, which by default or by complement, I would expect 30 to not be orange. Right? If you had 100 candies in your hand and 40% were supposed to be orange, you would expect about 40 to be orange. And that would mean by complement, if you do 1 minus 0.4, you would expect about 60 to not be orange. But the bottom line is these are all greater than or equal to 10, which is why I can officially put the approximately normal right there. Okay, now let's talk about this bad boy. Well, let's talk about center first. So you see that the center for your sampling distributions are the same as the center for your population, right? They were all pretty close to 0.4. But I want you to take note that the standard deviation changed. So let's use that formula, square root p, 1 minus p over n, and see what we're getting. So let me move this over here. I'll move it back over so we can see. Let me, oops, we can't see all of that. Let me clear this out. All right, so I want to, for here, I'm going to take 0.4. Oops, that actually, I'm going to move this over because it's, it's moving my little icon of myself right now. So for, for this first one, ooh, is it broken? I'm not sure what I did. I am having a tech moment right now. Come on, move, yay! All right, here we go. So with this, let's try and do the sampling error or the standard error for when we had 25 candies. So I would need to do the square root of 0.4 times one minus 0.4 divided by 25, all right? Oops, and I have a misplaced parentheses. I'm having all sorts of tech errors here. Let me put that parentheses in there. So 0.4 times one minus 0.4 divided by 25. And if I hit enter, we're looking at about 0.098, all right? And what was my standard error that they read? 0.096, so that was pretty close. All right, let's try it again, but for n equaling 50. Let's use that, that formula. So I'm gonna do the same entry, but I wanna change this to 50 and hit enter. And we're getting 0.069 for the standard error. And what did I have here? 0.069, okay? And then let's use that formula again. And it's, it's always square root p, one minus p over n. That's the formula when you're in proportion land. So let's do this again. But now our sample size was 100. Close that out. What number am I getting? About 0.049. So what did we get here? We got 051, so it's a little bit off, right? But still, that formula is working for the most part. It's giving us a really good approximation of the standard error. So I wanted us to see that for when we had a population proportion pretty close to 50%, like right there in the middle. Let's skew a little bit. All right, so we're gonna redo this, but now I want the population proportion to be 8%. So let's replay this out, but now I'm gonna have a population proportion of 8%. Let's reset this to 25 candies at a time, and I'll do 1,000 in just a moment, okay? But let's, let's get some feels, okay? So let me clear all of this out. If I had 25 candies, and only 8% of my population was orange candies, I would expect to just see two orange candies in my hand, right? So that's not that much. So let's see what would happen. Let me draw one of these for you first. Let me shrink this, all right, and I will animate. So I'm gonna do this, and I've got two orange candies, and there it is, right? I got 8%. Let me draw another one, all right? Ooh, 
I got no orange candies, right? Which isn't that rare. If you're only expecting two, it's not that unreasonable to get zero. And if you like orange candies, it's a bummer. And you can see the zero popping up here, the 8% here. Let me draw one more. Okay, I got one, two. We're going to go three. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nope. There it is, 8%. All right, I've done three. Let me bump this up to 997 more. I'm going to unanimate. All right, so I want us to take a look at what's happening here. Do you see this is skewed right? right? I, I do not have an approximately normal situ, um, distribution. So let me put skewed right. It looks like our mean was about 0.081, and our standard deviation was 0 0.057. All right, so we'll just keep those, those numbers in mind. All right, and now let's bump this up to 50. Okay, I'm just going to reset everything, go to 1,000 right out the gate. And then let me draw those samples. All right, so now if I'm looking at it, it still looks a little skewed right to me. I feel like the right tail is a little bit longer, but it's less skewed right than the distribution that we, the sampling distribution we had before this. And there's my mean and standard deviation. So let me write less skewed right. And then our mean was still 0.081. And our standard deviation this time was 0.040. All right, so you see the mean is staying the same. The standard error is getting smaller. Let's bump this up to 100. Oops, that's 1,000, excuse me. Let's go 100, but I want 1,000 of them. All right, now let me go ahead and draw samples. Oh, and I hit, all right, there we go. So this is looking a little bit closer to approximately normal. So I'm gonna say closer to approximately normal. Oops, that's not how you spell that. To approximately normal. What was our average? It looks like our average was right on the money at 8%, and our standard deviation was 0.028. Okay, so keeping all of this in mind, let's see how this is working in terms of the central limit theorem. All right, the central limit theorem for normality, you have to have np greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. So let's try this. I'm going to try and move it over here. All right. Oh, I ran into problems with that last time, so I guess I'll keep it here. Here, n times p, when we did it for the, the sample size of 25, n times p was not greater than or equal to 10, which is why I cannot put approximately normal here. And as soon as you fail at one of those, you're done. You fail at all of them. So now let's do 50 times 0.08. All right, when I hit enter, I get 4, which is, again, why I cannot say that this sampling distribution was approximately normal. I did not meet that requirement. Let's try 100. All right, 100 times 0.08. I'm still only at 8, so I can't throw down the approximately normal here. And the reason is because 8% is so close to 0, it's so skewed to one direction, that you need a pretty large sample size. Right? If I went to, let's try 150, I, I know I didn't do that here, but if I had done 150, is that large enough? So 150 was large enough to get normality, right? We see 12 would have worked here. And if you had done 150 times 1 minus 0.08, and again, I know I didn't ask that in this problem. I just want you to see how you could check normality. You would see that in your hand of 150 candies, you expect 12 orange and 138 not orange. But... I can't put normality on any of these. My sample size was not large enough. Um, the centers did stay the same. The centers stayed really close to the population proportion of 0.08. And let's think about the formulas that are governing these standard errors. So if I put my calculator back up, let's remember for 25, sample sizes of 25. All right, so if I wanted to do the standard error, it is the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by the sample size. And when I enter that in my calculator, I'm getting about 0.054, which is close to 0.057. That's a pretty good approximation. Let's try it for samples of size 50. Let me edit this out. All right, and we're looking at about 0.038. So again, pretty close, 0.040. And it's okay that they're off, all right? I only ran 1,000 samples here, so technically with the law of large numbers, I'd have to keep on going and keep on going. And this is theoretically, this number is what you theoretically would get. All right, so let's do 100 here. All 
and we are looking at about 0.027, which again, is pretty close to 0.028. So going back through this idea with proportions, ooh, that's a fun button. All right, when we had a population proportion of 40%, we were able to throw out the approximately normal the whole way through because all of our NPs and N1 minus Ps were greater than or equal to 10. And again, for this, this setting, this means I had at least 10 orange candies in my sample and at least 10 candies that were not orange in my sample. All right, center stayed the same. Standard error got smaller and smaller. On this version, where the sample, or the, excuse me, the population proportion was super skewed to a low number of 0.08, I couldn't put approximately normal on any of these because I didn't have at least 10 successes in my hand, in my sample on average. All right, but the center stayed the same and the standard error still got smaller. Okay. So that's just an, a little bit of a deeper look into how sampling distributions for sample proportions work. All right, we're going to work some examples. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.